Okay, thank you. I'm C.D. Sanyang. I work with Africa Rice as the rice sector program leader. And one of my key responsibilities at the center is to manage the Sadesi project, which is funded by the African Development Bank in consultation and working closely with our sister institutions like IITA, ICADA, and IFPRI. Um, basically, we went through two basic phases of SADC in terms of implementation. Um, yes, the African Development Bank is focused on development. We have to address issues of food security. We have to address issues of nutrition income for the beneficiaries and then uh, the whole issue of how to get adoption in, in that broader context. So to do that, the technologies have to be available. Yes, there can be existing technologies, there can be new technologies. When there are existing technologies, we may have to refine them to make sure that they suit the various needs of the various ecologies in irrigated rice, in upland rice, in low, 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 uh, lowland rain-fed rice as typical examples, key tree ecologies that this project has worked in. So there is need to look at existing technologies, there is need to look to also develop new technologies. So the first one, one and a half, two years of the project has focused on technology development, technology refinement to suit these various uh, ecologies we work in. And then when we went to midterm, we, were, we had a consultation, an independent consultant and an independent view, which is a bank hired uh, consultant. And we were advised that yes, we did a lot on technology generation, refining technologies. Now we must focus on delivery at the level of the household, in other words, the beneficiary. And to do that, we have some tools, one of those effective tools that brings the biophysical, the institutional people aspect, soft skills, technical skills, and the products and the services together is the innovation platform. Since we already have our hubs that have been well selected by our national partners with the support of Africa Rice, we were able to now go and ensure that with the facilitation, building relationship, trusts, putting people together, mobilizing them, getting champions within them to, to take up the cause of Africa Rice in, at the level of their community, the innovation platforms have been able to take the various technologies starting with a market pool like the gem that does rice per boiling but associated with it are the mills that communities that don't do rice per boiling they are interested in mill rice, white mill rice, how we put them together so that we have a market pool. But the market pool must be supported by what? Quality paddy. To get quality paddy you need to have good agricultural practice. You need to have good variety that is accepted by the market. You need to have rice advice as a technology so that they know the amount of fertilizer based on their affordability they can apply and yet get good, good yields. We need to be able to address the whole issue of post-harvest in terms of at the farm level as the tracer becomes critical. You know, also market assessments so that we are able to say we are in a position now to position uh, local pro uh, produce rice in market. We've seen those things. So market assessments that are directly in the communities with the people that are going to buy this rice. And today, as we heard from this uh, three-day review of the project, we have seen our key clients, the, the millers, the seed producers, the, uh, and the uh, SME and seed entrepreneurs, the equipment fabricators, the producers, farmers, um, you know, we have seen uh, women processors. We have all seen, of, seen all of them in these three days, how they have been able to self-mobilize with our support, how they have able to connect, learn from each other, 
lot of capacities building around these technologies and today we are seeing how substantially many of them have changed their lives. Today we are beginning to see enterprises coming out. Today we are beginning to see, for instance, in Nigeria, which is the most critical rice market, especially in West Africa, where local rice parboiled Faro 44 is able to catch up with Tylon that has been in the market for years. Now is beginning to compete. It. So I think with a market focus, a market driver, a market catalyst, technologies can be outscaled comparatively easily if we have the right environment. In other words, we must connect the people, not only the technologies, the people together. They come together, they learn together, they share experience together, and they go and test things and on their own in groups and then we come back. That is the beauty of these innovation platforms. It creates an, an environment at various levels, from community up to the level of policy. How can we influence policy? How can we get policy influencers to be active because of our community action that can trigger them? Because policy influencing is at various levels. You have policy makers, yes, but perhaps we are more strong are the policy influencers. We have to look for those things in these communities. So, and that is what we have been able to build for rice. Rice is critical. It's not a new crop. It's already a well-established crop. The challenge is market access. So, to do that, you can formulate policies, yes, that's the easy bit. But, and, but it's more difficult to apply. But when you start to work on quality rice, you start to work on market preferences, understanding them, you start to connect the actors together, you start to build competence and capacity of these actors, as one of them said, our capacity to innovate, to think for ourselves, to do things for ourselves, to connect, then you are able to change policy where formulated policies have not acted. So we are taking this two approach, bottom up and then top down for policy making and we are trying to do this project, especially for rice, how we influence policy so that rice policies cannot, they are not only formulated but they are implemented so that African rice consumers can start to use local produce rice and we have seen clear examples of that. So I believe the project has responded. We were supposed to reach about 20,000 households. We have surpassed that by 4.5%. So we have across the various rice value chain stakeholders. So we have done well. We have generated the technologies. We have disseminated them. People have changed. We heard of school fees being paid. We heard of my car is no longer standing all the time. I can buy fuel. We heard of people who have been able to take their children from nursery, that kids that were sitting in the home, now they have been able to put them in nursery. Some of them have moved their kids in Nigeria from public primary school to a private public school. So these are the early adopters. Yes, some may say it is not widespread, but we have to focus on early adopters to showcase that this can work to motivate others. And that's why we do this outcome assessment soon after the introduction of the technology. What was happening before our intervention, what has happened after a reasonable point of time of um, intervention. I think this is what this project has done so well. And we want to build on that as a broad strategy for Africa Rise for most of the projects that we will be working on. Thank you. A little bit, just a second, a little bit about the future. Like after this? this um, the feature is that we heard from, it's about sustainability, we heard from the participants, the beneficiaries, they have their ideas, it is working. For a broader strategic feature, fortunately, African Development Bank, and not only that they have now convinced other donors, the Feed Africa Initiative, one of their high fives to change or transform Africa. Feed Africa initiative, the contribution of the CGAR in general is what we call technologies for African agricultural transformation. 
this idea of baby is being bought now by into by other donors like Bill and Melinda Gates, the World Bank. Okay, m maybe they all have their way how to comp uh, accompany this. But the African Development Bank in particular and with CGIR want to quickly start to catalyze that process through TAT, which we hope certainly will start in 2017 and rice is a strong component of that and that so the the Sadesi, what Sadesi has done rice uh, tart will pick that up to multiply it replicate it in as many places as possible within the primary countries that will be working on but not limited to all the those countries even countries outside that are not our initial what we call core hub countries we should be able to link up with them in specific interventions that we see there are opportunities